Hello and welcome to Legends of the Dead, the brand new DLC for Crusader Kings 3 and the first of three major expansions promised at the start of this year. This DLC adds, as you can imagine, a ton of new ways to die. It adds in a load of new diseases, it adds in new events for the young and for the elderly, but that's not all it adds. It also adds ways to celebrate how the characters lived, it adds in legends that can be spoken about throughout the world which can grow over time, can be expanded upon and celebrate great acts. Like if you do a huge holy war, you can then be known for that. Your legacy will pass down through the generations. And this goes into another new system called um, Legitimacy, which you can see down here in the bottom left in the slightly redesigned area. Legitimacy is a way of a uh, you justifying your rule. It's a way of saying, a lesser man could not do this, but I can. If we go and have a look through this, you'll see that if you have low legitimacy, you're getting a ton of negatives. People don't want to ally with you. People don't want to be your vassal. It's going to cost more to justify your claims because people need some more justification there. But if you go all the way to the max level, you get the exact opposite. You get people wanting to be your ally. You get popular opinion throughout the world so that people will not rise up against you because they know you are the rightful ruler. You don't even get short reign at all. That's just completely wiped out if you have high legitimacy. People aren't mad that you're the new ruler. You are the new ruler by right. That's the kind of thing that these new systems are adding in. And it also appears to be adding in a lot of new ways for you to really uh, stand out as individual characters, which I think they're going to expand upon the later DLCs, especially the DLCs that allow you to play as unlanded characters, which it's going to completely change how the game plays, but we'll get to that in like nine months when they release it. What we want to do now is we want to focus on this playthrough, and I was thinking what kind of person did I want to be and what kind of campaign did I want to play? So. I've decided to bring a concept that we've had for a while building throughout a couple of different campaigns and see how it actually plays in practice. So the idea of this is small court. What we're going to do is we are going to actively prune our court of people who are not good, right? Like usually the tactic in the game is to increase the number of people at your court. Just constantly increase it, exponentially increase it, because that gives you a huge number of people to choose from. It gives you people who could do all sorts of things, those people have children, those children can do all sorts of things. There's a lot to it. But, what if we create a court which is the opposite? What if we say, these children can be born at other courts, they'll come to our court because we are the court of legends, we're the court that people want to be at. That's the kind of campaign I want to run. And I was thinking, what other things do I want to be doing? Well, I want to be adventuring, I want to be conquering, I want to be actively doing things within the world. And for that, it made sense for us to go someone who had a legacy which actually allows us to do that. So, if we have a look in here and we have a look at legacies, we are a character who has the adventurer legacy, which just seems to fit in nicely with how the rest of uh, the mechanics are designed for legends, right? If we are an adventurer, we're going conquering, we're taking huge bits of land from nations that are far larger than us. This kind of thing makes a lot of sense to me for us to do, because then we can grow our le legend over time. So, to do that, we had to be someone who was within the North Germanic culture group which meant we had to be in this area. So, I thought about it a little bit more and decided that we are going to be playing as this guy over here on Sund. Now, why are we playing as them? Well, our liege is currently involved in some quite interesting business. Our liege is currently the ally over here, so our liege is Jarl Bjorn Ironside of Upland. He is currently the ally of Halfdan Whiteshirt of Jorvik. So, they are currently invading Northumberland as the Sons of Lothrock um, kind of union here. So, he's immediately off doing interesting things. We can potentially join him, we can potentially build up our own thing. If they take a bunch of land, we got some stuff over here, we got a huge nation spread out across the place. We are a seafaring group, obviously, I mean we're an island. 
We can go and raid a ton of people along here. Lots of opportunity. And it generally just seems like a good opportunity for us to potentially expand eastward. Um, because there's a whole bunch of land here that we could get into. It's usually land that in a lot of playthroughs, if you're starting down here, you just never get to, right? You focus on the Byzantines. You, you maybe focus on Iberia. You maybe go over here for Crusade. You don't tend to come up here very often. So I think it would be interesting to potentially expand a little eastward. Potentially see what we could do over here. And maybe let some of these nations down here develop over time. Let the Byzantines become stronger. Let Francia become stronger. Let the Abbasids become stronger. Maybe we'll go in, we'll deal with Khazaria. That'll be our big foe for the start. And then we'll come down here later in the game and we'll have some big nations with their own legends to deal with. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So, in order to do all of this, we need to start with us, all the way down here. And we need to figure out what we are doing. So, who are we? We are Chieftain Sulvi of um, Avenanma. Okay, we are pretty garbage. Our martial is fantastic, but our prowess, not so good. Our um, diplomacy is okay. Everything else is garbage. Luckily, we don't really need intrigue, we don't really need stewardship, and we don't really need learning right now. None of those are particularly that useful for us. So we're not in too bad a situation. We're an open terrain expert, which is, I think, fine, but I don't know if this is open terrain down here. Yeah, a lot of this is Taiga, which is not open. Plains over here is open. Okay, so some areas around here are fine, but some areas are not. So we're going to have to be careful about if we declare war and we're a leader, what we actually do here. Okay, interesting. Um, and we have three children. We have Ingvir, who has reasonable prowess. Oh, yes, I actually almost forgot just because we were talking about, um, yes, trying to make sure we had the best. One other reason why I wanted to play up in this part of the world is they have a unique succession law. And that unique succession law will eventually come into play. Now, we currently don't have it just because of where our character is. But if I go to the Norse culture, you'll see that there is this ting meat cultural tradition. This allows Scandinavian elective to um, be our succession type. And I think that that will actually be very interesting in our, I want to build good characters. I want to have a good uh, like nation. I want to have good vassals underneath us. This kind of thing will really lean into that. And that's what I want to do. I want to be playing with Elective when we can get there. So we'll see how it all plays out. Anyway, we'll get to our culture in a bit. Uh, it's just a, when we looked at our children, it reminded me. So, first child, reasonable prowess, not great education. Stats are pretty bad across the board. I mean, he's got okay things here. Like, he's got Brave, which is okay, but... He's not that good. How's uh, son number two? Son number two, again, reasonable prowess. Stats are kind of bad. I mean, uh, this this guy's finished his education. This one's got a little bit of time. We could maybe do some edu uh, We could maybe educate him to be a little bit better. And then we have our daughter down here, who is obviously not very good at anything, but she is four years old. What were we expecting? Okay, are we having any more children? Wife is 37. I think the chances of more children are probably on the slim side. But potentially we could. Okay. Uh, let's see how our court looks. So I'm trying to think of a better way. Let, let's set up our court, our council first and then see who's left over. That seems like a good thing to do. So our Gaudi here um, is not really providing us very much. He just provides us piety and claims. So I don't know if we need to prioritize that one. Maybe Marshall is a good one to prioritize. Um, okay, so we don't have a ton of people in our court. Be my first uh, observation. So our steward, I think, could probably be our son, right? He's got reasonable stewardship. He is better. So could our current steward be our marshal? Potentially for now. Let's just do this. We'll work out where everyone's going to be in a second. Our spy master has zero intrigue. A hot take, I think that's a little low. Uh, let's see who we've got here. 
So we could have Mayor be our uh, spy master. Or we could have our son be our spy master. Now our son does like us, so is less likely to, um, you know, kill us. Well, everyone else doesn't. So let's maybe put our son in here. This then leaves our steward situation a little bit odd. Yes, I forgot. We don't have anybody else. Okay, so Mayor, you get the job uh, by ver Actually, this person likes us slightly more. Um, Ulf Hilder, Hilder uh, you get this job uh, due to being one of the few people who can actually do the job. Okay. Uh, and then our Chancellor, I think, is on the best person. Yeah, so we're not doing great with um, the people available to us. We could potentially replace our uh, Gaudi here, though. Um, let's maybe go with Mare. Let's, let's, let's go with that. Okay. So, not looking great. Which one of these do we want to go for? Domestic affairs or foreign affairs? Uh, well, this increases fellow vassal opinion. Do we have fellow vassals? We do have fellow vassals. Okay. Fellow vassal opinion would be fine then. This increases direct vassal opinion, which will matter not one bit to us because... Do we even have any vassals? No. No, we have no vassals. So, obviously that's the right choice. Here, we can either organize our army, which gets us some garrison size stuff and lowers our army maintenance, or we can try and train our commanders to make them better. I think training our commanders makes sense. Again, if we're trying to make a good court, that's a good way about it. Now, I don't like that there's these side effects. That sounds very bad, but we'll take what we can get. So we're looking for somebody with better marshal at some point. Okay, here uh, we can either collect taxes or get development. Now taxes are only 5%. How much do we actually make? So we make 1.2. So 5% of 1.2 is uh, 0.5. Yeah, I think we could probably afford to switch on to increase development given that that gives us nothing effectively yeah so let's let's just get him to increase development for now and then our spy master is going to disrupt schemes that seems fine oh okay so yeah so now we're making 0 0.9 but i think like the difference is like not really that noticeable between zero between 0 0.9 and 1 i think that's fine okay you can disrupt schemes for now but we could potentially have her finding secrets that could potentially be good why don't you go find secrets in our liege's court? That seems fine. Yeah, just because there's no real reason for her to sit here. Nobody should be scheming against us because we're very unimportant right now. Okay, uh, next stuff. Let's have a look in here. We have no court physician. Yeah, my son and heir can marry. That seems important. We don't have a wet nurse. Yeah, okay. We have few champions. That is also an important thing to note. We can station our men at arms. Okay, so we do have some men at arms. We have some Bondi. And we also have some Vigman. Well, I have 500 of these guys. So I think probably we're going to put them here. Then they can get uh, some bonuses from being there. Yeah, because although we have... These guys are probably better. I think that, you know, just the pure numbers is going to do something for us there. Okay, uh, which one of these do we want to deal with first? Guardian for our son could probably be something we could deal with. So let's see here. Um, I mean, I'll have a look. Do we have a genius in our court? No. Do we have somebody who is intelligent in our court? No. Do we have somebody who is quick in our court? No. Okay, so in our court, we have very few options for him. Let's just go through the uh, realm for a second here. We're going to go to Upland. Is there a genius in Upland? No. <laughs> is there anyone intelligent in Upland? There is a singular intelligent person in all of Upland, and that is the wife of our liege. Well, I mean, uh, where are we? Would you educate um, my son? I'm going to offer you a ward. My son. Now, I would really rather your wife did it rather than you. Um, yeah, so she 
does she already have people she's educating? No, she's just ineligible. Okay, well, that's not going to work. Is there anyone quick in Upland? No. <laughs> okay, um... So, there aren't a ton of great options for educating our son here. I think the best option is probably that we educate our son. Not because we're going to be very good at it, but because us as the player can at least make the traits not terrible. Which I think is probably going to be fine. Anyone to do a martial education? That's fine. I mean, we actually have a really good martial education, which does affect it, so... Cool. Right. Next step. Let's have a look in here. So, you can marry. So, Ingvar. Who are we looking for for Ingvar? Well, obviously somebody who has an inheritable trait would be lovely. Okay. There are a few people with inheritable traits who could marry Ingvar. Okay. We have uh, an Amazonian who's 38 here. I kind of want somebody who's around his age. Let's go age difference of five years. That lowers it down quite a lot. Um, and then maybe sort by prowess? Yeah. So just want to see what we got. So we got Hail, which would be okay. Quick would be good because we could have them educate people as well. Uh, we should, I suppose, also look at these stats. So any stat that we think you could use, you could maybe use Marshall boosted up. At which point you're looking at a Fecund, potentially for the fertility option. She's actually not got bad Marshall. Okay. 11 Marshall, 13 stewardship. Quick, 16 years old. I think she might be fine. Um, she's currently wandering, so we're dragging her into our court by doing this. She could potentially then educate our son. But that's not a bad idea. Now, I would say let's do a grand wedding. However, those on average cost about 280 gold. And, well, we don't have 280 gold. Right, so she can come here and she can be a wet nurse. Uh, court physician. We only have terrible options. All right. Well, I'm going to wait a second on that. Uh, we have a lot of martial perks. So we have overseer. Ooh, this is actually really good. One, we get some advantage in control territory, which is great when you're small. We get some plague resistance. Well, that's good. Uh, it's also new. Okay. Enemy occupations do not lower control. Those, that's actually useless for us because um, if the enemy occupies our land, we lose. Because uh, we only have one bit of land. Here, this is fine. Um, just seeing what else we got here. So this is all mostly fine. Absolute control is going to be great. Because that will get us extra bonuses. When we hold a... Uh, when we have full control in all of our held holdings. So that should be good. And then Overseer gives us a good amount of stats as well. Okay. I think this seems good. And then maybe go down Gallon afterwards. Yeah. I could be happy with that. Uh, now the question is, do we go for increased prowess? And I think we do. Why am I so worried about prowess? Well, if you want to make a really good character, what you have to do is you have to go and join tournaments and things. Uh, and most of the term, uh, tournament events tend to focus on prowess. So, that's what I want to do. Okay, is there anything else we need to immediately do? Uh, I think having a, just a quick look at our court. I just want to find anyone who is currently not doing something. So... If we got somebody who is currently just in our court, like Alfred there, here, and is doing nothing, why is she in our court? What What is she doing in our court? Nothing. We could marry her off to try and get someone else in our court, but no. We're going to dismiss her. That's the new way that we're going to do things. Oh, that does cost me some prestige, which is actually a little unfortunate right now. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, we're going to leave it a little bit on this then. <laughs> Mainly because I don't have the prestige to really be throwing around like this. Is there anything I can build in Sund? Uh, eventually we'll sort things out. I need some gold, but then I could eventually build some of these things. Okay. And I can't build that either. How much does it cost to build a new holding? Um, yeah, I, I can't because I have a tribal holding. I see. Okay. So we're looking for 75 gold. That's, that's our next big thing. Probably 75 gold build some markets. That would be a good idea, f I think. Yeah. Let's um, unpause the game, I think. Just, I mean, we don't have a wet nurse, but we can wait and see um, how my son's wife is. So let's see. Achievement unlocked. I mean, we don't really have achievements unlocked. It's just 
the game tells you each playthrough. We're not endorsed by this person. How much are they not giving us? I don't think they were giving us anything anyway. So let's not worry about that. My son is married. Wonderful. So, uh, are you good at being a wet nurse? No. Are you good at being a court physician? No. Okay. Um, you could at least educate our son. Um, yeah, let's remove guardian. Let's then educate child, and we will put her in here. She is quick, quick, um, intelligent, genius. These are all like the major factors in education, so we'll do that. Wonderful. That seems good to me. Okay. Uh, court physician, we do need somebody to fill the role. We just don't have anyone who's good at it. I guess we could go for a wife, because at least she probably wouldn't be encouraged to kill us. So, let's do that. Ooh, and then we've got some more duties at the bottom. Okay, so this is new. So we can never do regular duties. You never try and control plagues to give us plague resistance at no cost. We can have her do advanced research to give us monthly lifestyle experience. In, for any experience. Okay. Uh, and, or we could get piety. Okay, this is all new stuff. This is cool. Let's get us some monthly lifestyle experience. That seems incredible. And it costs us nothing to do that. Okay. Um, and then we need a wet nurse because that'll make our children better. So I guess you're going to fill the role. Being the best of the uh, rest. Okay. The only benefit that she has is that she has good health. She has no like trait that makes it good. She just has good health. Okay. There are no extra things for being a wet nurse, but that kind of makes sense. Okay, how many troops do we have? We have 800. Just looking around. So we can't really fight against Finland here. They're too strong. And then we're bordering Upland currently. So there's not really anything we could do there. Is there anyone nearby we could beat? Uh, We could beat this vassal. Okay. That might be worth thinking about. Actually, instead of doing what you're doing, how about you just go over here and you try and get us a little claim on that. Uh, can we raid? I assume we can raid, so maybe it, we just go raiding? Is there anywhere that's easy to raid? Maybe Estonia? That seems fairly easy to raid. Are we allowed to raid Estonia? I think so. Let's raise some troops. Let's try some things out. So, uh, I guess we'll lead because we're actually really good at that. Let's go land on Estonia. Let's see if we can raid it. I don't know if we can, but we'll find out very quickly if we can't. So, yes, we can raid Estonia. Now, they do have quite a few troops that are now going off raiding, which is fine. I'm not that worried about that. Wait, are they going to raid us? No. <laughs> I was thinking that that was that would just be rude. Um, right, head over here. Let's do some more raiding over this way. Our liege is not doing well in their war, but that's only due to ticking war score. So nobody has done anything, I'm assuming, in this war currently? Yeah, so the hostile army is currently sieging over here. As these... Uh, there's a neutral army. Yeah, so they're currently doing some sieges as well. So everyone's just sieging. Nobody's actually doing anything. How many are on each side? 4,000 versus 6,000. So each side... Actually, is this... Uh, yeah, there, there, there are our leash's army. Okay, so that's all of their strength is right there. They've got a little strength in North Riding. Okay, looks like we might win, but we'll see. Right. Ooh, fire and blood. The settlement of Narva, an important stronghold in Greater Veruma, has fallen to my raiders. We have the run of vast tracts of land and many of the quivering subjects and shining treasures of Chieftain Vargelimba. Uh, to choose from. The troops stand ready, awaiting my command to give them direction. So we can go for bounteous plunder. So we lower the development in this area. It is recently sacked, and we get some extra uh, stuff here. However, we would gain some stress, or we've taken enough already, which would lose us the tiny amount of piety that we have. But I'm going to take the bounteous plunder. We also captured a prisoner. Now, in terms of making our realm better, what we want to be doing is looking at these prisoners and going... Do we think that there's somebody that we want? I mean, that's a large amount of intrigue for a 10-year-old. 
Uh, something that we could work with. Although well, liege pass limited uh, tribal authority. Okay, that's fine. Do we want her? Uh, potentially. We could... Oh, we can't recruit her. Oh, so all we could do is convert her. Okay. Uh, releasing her does lose us dread, which is not really ideal. We could execute her, which is not really ideal. We could ransom her for 50 gold. Okay, well, I think I'll ransom her for 50 gold, given those options. Uh, can we raid uh, Vodi? We could. Uh, are we full on our um, raid amount? No, we need just a little bit more. Okay. I think we head to Vodi, we raid it, and we head back. Okay. Sounds like a plan. It's got actually just exactly the amount of loot we needed. Ah, there you go. The sieges have finished over here. So all the ticking war score went away, and these two sieges are now here. And we got the enemy capital. Yeah. That is pretty much over for them. They broke their siege of North Riding, which means that um, they're not even going to get some war score back. That is very, very bad for them, but great for us. Okay, so we now have a full amount of loot. Let's head back home. Wonderful. Found secrets. Despite our best efforts, my agents have yet to uncover any secrets. Uh, okay, I'm just going to switch her back to disrupt schemes. The reason I'm going to do that is it could be that there aren't any secrets in the game currently. Which I did realize, like, they just might not spawn yet. We might have to wait for, like, a few events to happen and then they might spawn. I mean, obviously we could, in theory, um, like, there's a fabricate option in there, but I, I don't think it's worth it. There's nothing we really want. We were just having her do it instead of doing anything else. Of all the buffoonery I have ever seen, uh, in Alfir's inane efforts to improve my relations with my neighbors, my good-for-nothing chancellor has officially acknowledged Chief Voito of Finland's claim to the chieftain of Avenanma. Well, that is not ideal. However, this guy, if he wants to press his claim in Finland, has to attack my liege of Upland. That is not going to happen. So, that's okay. Got a bunch of money here. Uh, and we could just go raiding again, honestly. Uh, we have enough money, though, to start building. Let's start building something. Uh, what do we want? I mean, I'm tempted to grab markets, because I think that those would be very good for, like, gaining money over time, but given that raiding is really our main res like, is our main way of gaining these resources right now, maybe we take something like war camps. It makes our knights better, which would be good if we're aiming for good knights. Yeah, let's do that. Let's build some war camps. Okay. And then, um, uh, need to figure out where we're going next. Estonia? Oh, they, they, they're completely destroyed, but I was just there, now that I remember. Could head into Livonia, but they're a little stronger. Yeah, some of these guys along here are just a little stronger. Ooh, how about these guys right down here? Weak. Completely weak. Is there a way into here? There is. Perfect. Let's go. Okay. Oh, they've also been raided. Well, this one's been raided. They, nobody's raided this side of their uh, land yet. We're being attacked. Perfectly all right with that. We are currently in a battle. Are we winning? Yes, because our troops are just better. And we have troops which counter their men-at-arms, which is uh, devastating for them. Wonderful. Okay. Now we're going to head back. We got mismanaged population. What's that? Popular opinion is down by 40. Well, that's horrible, but there's not really a lot we can do about it. Right. Work our way back. Jarl Bjorn is being attacked by Chieftain uh, Thorfinn of Varmaland. Okay. Uh, yeah. Why? For a conquest war. Yeah, that's unfortunate, because our liege is over here in this war. Uh, although, it looks like they might win that war in this next set of sieges. Let's see. They got a ton, but they didn't get... Their war score went down. Why? Um, I don't know. Maybe their land is worth less than it used to be? Um, maybe they gained some extra land, therefore the individual provinces are worth less? That's my only thought there. Or something was... De ah, something was de-sieged here. 
They, they went and desieged it. Ah, that's what happened. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, we've arrived back with almost nothing. Uh, let's d disband for now, and then hopefully we our troops can reinforce a little bit, and then we'll head back out again in a little bit. Also, we have enough money to hold a grand tournament. Ooh, cool. Um, there is also a new activity now, which is a funeral. You obviously can't do it because there's nobody to bury, but be interesting to see how that goes. And an activity that I've never done in terms of a blot. Or at least I don't remember having done it. Um, which is uh, exclusive to this culture, I think. So, yeah, be cool to try that out. Anyway, I am going to end the first episode here. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please consider leaving a like, comment, subscribing, all of that sort of stuff. I only tell you at the start of the first episode of a series because it's the one that matters for search ranking and SEO, and it helps the channel and series grow. So, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.